So for this one, it's going to be a rather short video, I think, but um, we're talking about, for us, Lesson 03, Operations with Integers. Um, more or less, just want to hammer home some rules um, that you'll see when we add, subtract, multiply, and divide with integers. So we might not even go through a full smart score or anything like that, just enough to kind of get the general idea of what's going on. For this one, I am I'm going to be using IXL B1 in Algebra 1 to um, act as kind of a template for what we're doing here. Okay, so the first one asks, is negative 217 divided by 7 positive or negative? So that brings us to one of the kind of rules that it wants to hammer home in this uh, chapter 0 lesson, basically something you should know coming into Algebra 1, and if not, we're trying to catch that up really quickly. Um, when you have either the same signs or opposite signs with multiplication and division, what happens, basically? So, when you are multiplying and dividing, if the signs are the same, your um, product for multiplication or your quotient for division is going to be positive, but if they're different signs, like this first example, they're going to be negative. So you notice it doesn't really ask us to say what the answer is, say what this quotient is, just whether or not it's positive or negative. So it keeps it kind of geared towards that rule that we're looking for. So because this is a negative number and because the 7 is positive, those are different those are different signs, we know that's going to be negative. Same kind of thing here, except multiplication, so it wants to know is the product, so the answer of this multiplication, 198 times negative 22. Well that 22 is negative, the 198, even if you don't show like a plus symbol, an addition symbol in front of it, it we assume it to be positive. Because one's positive and one's negative, those are different. With multiplication and division, that means it's going to be a negative number that you end up with. Um, same idea here. Doesn't even really matter what the values themselves are. Um, we see a negative and a positive. I see that it's either multiplication or division. It's going to be negative again. Okay, this time we're getting into addition and subtraction. Um, again, you notice it doesn't ask for the actual answer, just positive or negative. So basically, what I'm telling myself in my head, negative, really big value, plus a positive, not so big value, what, what's going to happen there? Well, all this tells me here is that we are really far negative. So we're really far below zero on the number line, um, and when I say number line, what I mean um, is basically if this is zero, then to the right, that's all my positive numbers, all the way up to like infinity technically, just goes on forever. Everything to the left is negative. We're getting further away from zero in the negative direction, negative infinity, basically infinitely small numbers. So what this does is it tells me I am somewhere really far over into the negatives. Even though I'm adding a positive number, I only just barely move back towards zero. It's not big enough to put me onto the other side, so it's gonna stay negative. So basically, if you're adding in the negative numbers, the larger value itself, it's gonna stay negative. So let's go ahead and pick that one. Okay, so is one times 88 positive or negative? This is kind of going back to what we were talking about before. A positive and another positive means it's going to be a positive um, answer. Um, similarly, if these were both negatives, like a negative 1 and a negative 88, they would still be positive. So when you're multiplying and dividing, two of the same sign, positive. 
Okay, so now we are dividing, but like I just mentioned, two of the same signs, negative and negative. Even though they're both negative, because it's the same sign, that's going to be a positive answer. This one actually asks for the value. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Let's see what the next one is, but depending on what it's asking, we might um, wrap up. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. I'm going to refresh here. And let's skip around and see if we can find anything we didn't touch on, but other than that, we might have uh, fully wrapped up. So that is division. Okay, so kind of going back to what we talked about with the number line. Um, here we have a positive number, 95, so that's somewhere on this side. Plus another positive number means no matter what that number is, 65 or 650 or 65 million, it's just bringing us further into the positives. So I know my answer would be positive. If this was instead, let's draw it out here. This will be kind of where we wrap up. 95 minus 65. Uh, big number, positive number. We're on to the right side of our number line. And this is kind of what you got to think about in your head as you're breaking something like this down, figuring out if you're going to end positive or negative. We're subtracting, so we're getting closer to zero. However, this number is not uh, bigger than 95, so we're going to stay on this side and we're still going to end positive. So either way, we would end positive. The one last thing we didn't really get to see is if we had something like this. 65 minus 65. Or um, means the same thing, but if I had 65 and then plus a negative 65, if you're adding a negative, that's just like subtracting. Basically, flip your brain into subtraction mode at that point. You don't have to think about it in any more complex manner than that. This and this are the same. If we have a number that is positive and we subtract basically the opposite, um, so if we subtract the same number or we add the opposite, so adding a subtract, adding a negative 65, I mean, um, that's called the additive inverse. It didn't really mention it in this IXL, but basically all that means is fancy term for if you combine a number and its opposite, it's going to go to zero. So 65 minus 65 is zero. A billion minus a billion is zero. 151 plus negative 151 goes to zero. Just a fancy name, additive inverse for that rule. Okay, we'll wrap up here. Um, hopefully that one helped. And it's just, again, clarifying some rules more than actually testing your adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing abilities. All right, we'll uh, move on to the next sections pretty soon. Hopefully that helped. Leave a like if so, and we'll see you.